Hello class and welcome to They Don't Teach That. I'm your host, Jay Coble, and today we're going to be talking about another territory and how it became part of the United States. What do you get when you cross a Spanish settlement, a handful of alligators, and a 24-pack of natty ice? You guessed it, we're talking Florida. Ah, Florida, the sunshine state. It was actually the first area in the United States to be settled by Europeans. Fun fact! It was actually settled by the Spanish, specifically around 1513. During 1516, however, it would gain its name La Florida, after conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon would show up and name it after the Festival of Flowers and Easter celebration in Spain because they landed in April when all the flowers were blooming and he saw and gazed upon the beautiful fertile soil and the flowers and goes, yeah, flower. But what was he doing there? He was supposedly looking for the fountain of youth, if you believe the legends. However, these legends wouldn't start to arise until long after his death, proving them to just be that, legends. In actuality, he just kind of popped across it. See, other Spanish settlers began scouting it out in 1513, and by 1516, when he arrived and named it, it was already kind of known by the Spanish that it existed. Anyways, with this discovery, other Spanish settlers would come along, as well as other conquistadors, including Tristan de Luna y Arellano who would arrive and attempt his first settlement in the area, around the area that is now Pensacola. But this would ultimately fail, and the settlement was virtually annihilated by 1861. In 1864, however, the French decided to throw their hat into that ring that is now Florida, and would settle the area of Fort Caroline. However, the Spanish would ransack it within a year, and wipe it completely off the map. Why you gotta be like that, Spain? By this point, in 1865, the Spanish settlement of St. Augustine had been established by Pedro Mendez de Avilés. And I am just the worst at pronouncing names. I know. You could tell it in the Hawaii video, and it's only gonna get worse from here. I promise. So don't hate me. So, any hoozles. This actually birthed the first official generation of the government within Florida, with the Spanish settlers being the ones in charge setting up set settlements and areas of interest for people to settle, farm, and mine and other trade industries. This was also the first area where a wedding happened, or at least a Christian wedding happened, on the soil of America. See, it's also around this time that the Spanish kind of had some trouble holding Florida. See, they also had areas in Cuba and the West Indies, but they really didn't have that strong of a foothold or defensive positioning. So Florida was kind of key to their whole strategy, to have a section on a mainland and to have the little pockets of islands as well. So in 1672, Castillo de San Marcos would be erected and Fort Montazas in 1742 would come shortly after. This would give Spain an excellent foothold in that region of the world. But the fun couldn't last forever for Spain because during the Seven Year War, the British took Havana. And so Spain, deciding they needed Havana, traded the eastern section of Florida to the British splitting Florida down the center into east and west. Don't worry guys, we will be covering the Seven Year War in a future video. There's actually quite a few future videos that are gonna be brought up within this specific video. So bear with me. There's a lot of crazy stuff that Florida is involved with. Since the Spanish split from the English and split Florida down the center to east and west, a huge amount of the Spanish settlers in Florida, just up and left over into West Florida, where the Spanish still had control. They didn't want to live under English rule, and they didn't want to become part of the colonies and be taxed like the colonists. Fun part about the colonies as well, Florida is the only major colonies 
that didn't actually send representatives to the Continental Congress. In fact, Florida wanted nothing to do with the revolution at all. And when the Brits lost the Revolutionary War, they kinda had to up and out of Florida, which gave Spain the opportunity to just kinda move back in. Just kinda move back in. So under Spain's rule, Florida became a haven for freed slaves, escaped slaves, criminals, the Seminole uh, Native American tribes and raiding parties, and uh, pretty much what the United States at that time considered the undesirables. And this kind of rubbed the U.S. the wrong way at the time, too. So eventually, because of the American settlers wanting to move further south and further west, they would eventually start making their way into West Florida and setting up camp setting up settlements all throughout the western Florida area, which the Spanish didn't really like, but they kind of couldn't do anything about it at the same time. And these guys... <laughs> these guys were known as the Florida Crackers. Salty Crackers that they were, they didn't like the Spanish telling them what they could and couldn't do. So they gathered a bunch of guys together and marched to the capital of West Florida, Baton Rouge. Yep, the current capital of Louisiana. They marched their way all the way over and took over the capital, waving their own independent flag for all the sea. Yep, they took it over. And upon taking it over as well, the U.S. government kind of annexed the rest of it and called it theirs because they claimed that they had bought it during the Louisiana Purchase, so therefore it was theirs, not the Spanish. And from there, the U.S. kind of just annexed into Mississippi and Alabama and what is now parts of Georgia and kind of just took over that whole chunk of Florida. The president at the time, President James Madison, our fourth president, by the way, who also fought in the War of 1812, which we'll be covering in another episode, Basically just kind of said, yeah, that's ours, so we're going to take it, and just kind of took over all those little areas, kind of took over a lot of little pockets throughout that region, and that was just kind of all that was to be done with it. And Spain, Spain at the time couldn't do anything, because they were busy fighting their own wars in the peninsula. So Spain isn't sending any troops, and America's just kind of taking the land and making it into their own territories and their own new states. So there's not really a whole lot that the Spanish could do about this. So they kind of just let it slide. And it wasn't until like 1812 when the U.S. annexed the like Mobile District of West Florida and claiming it for Mississippi that a few of the Georgian citizens tried to convince the Eastern Florida residents to just join the U.S., which failed miserably. It continuously failed to the point that they actually had to pull everybody out and stop. See, it was around this time that the Seminole Native American tribe had begun to attack inwards on the Georgian settlements, townships, and travelers. The U.S. government couldn't really handle that and couldn't let that slide, so they would chase the Seminole all the way to the border of Florida, where they would cross into Florida, where the U.S. didn't have jurisdiction. In fact, the Secretary of State at the time, John Quincy Adams, the son of John Adams, actually had something really interesting to say about it. A derelict open to the occupancy of every enemy, civilized or savage, of the United States, and serving no other earthly purpose than as a post of annoyance to them. John Quincy Adams. And so it was that the U.S. annexed into Florida effectively taking over its government, while Spain couldn't really do anything about it. Spain was recovering from the Peninsula Wars, where they were basically rebuilding their entire cities, all their towns, and everything that was damaged during the war, so they couldn't afford to send the people, the manpower, the soldiers, or the might to take it back from America. So, in 1822, they gave it up. Actually, they gave it up in 1821. We made it a uh, territory in 1822, combining it completely. 
into what we now know as Florida. And it wasn't until 1842 that we really started to give Florida some credence in towards being a state. And it wasn't until the Second and Third Seminole Wars came to their conclusion that Florida would gain statehood on March 3rd of 1845, the very last day in office for President John Tyler. Florida was named the 27th state of the United States of America. I'm Jay Cobley, and they don't teach that. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Every little bit helps. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you never miss out on any of my videos. Check me out on my socials, which will be listed below in the description as well. All my sources will be down there as well, on top of that, as per the usual. Uh, I'm very sorry, guys. I have been really inactive lately due to the fact that I had a computer issue. I recently just bought a new computer, though, so we'll be getting back on regularly scheduled programs as soon as possible. Thank you for understanding the delay. Hopefully we won't have another one for quite a while. But until then, of course, I am Jay Cobley. Thank you again for watching. It means a lot.